Dancing Fearless. This video is about the conflict between the individual and the collective. This debate has heated up again in America because of a renewed interest in socialism. And there is another fight between individual rights, such as free speech, and collective rights, such as protecting groups from hate speech. I will be comparing the views of Jordan Peterson and Rudolf Steiner. The individual has been slammed so relentlessly and that we have ideas out there now that for, for young people that they think that socialism is cool. I mean, that seems to be coming back, right? I mean, do you think there's anything unique about the, the battle between uh, the individual and the collective right now, or is this just a repeating of what's gone on I think, decades I think, before? I think this has been a continuous argument for the last 130 years. When Jordan Peterson said that the battle between the individual and the collective heated up 130 years ago, I did the math, and that was 1889. This was when Rudolf Steiner was writing his Philosophy of Freedom. Within this historical context, it can be seen how the Philosophy of Freedom was Steiner's contribution to support the emerging individuality that was confronting collectivism in his day. It is often thought that the rise of individualism began with the me generations of baby boomers, Gen X, or millennials. I found a recent study that shows it began at the turn of the late 19th and early 20th century. Yes, it was about 130 years ago when researchers identified a rise of individualistic cultural factors such as the use of individualistic words like I and me, a preference for unique baby names, a decrease in family size, more adults living alone, and less interest in religion. With the increase in education and wealth, people became more independent. This started the shift away from the duty and conformity of collectivism toward more self-directed individualism. The battle between the individual and the collective has heated up again, making the ideas in the philosophy of freedom very relevant today. The philosophy of freedom is available as a free download on our website. Jordan Peterson sees the sovereignty of the individual as the fundamental value in the Western world that favors the individual over the collective. Yeah, well, I've been making the case, I suppose, or, or developing the argument. And it's an argument everybody knows to some degree, although I don't think we've done a very good job of articulating it um, over the last few decades that you know, it's, it's no secret that our free societies or the free societies of the world are predicated on the idea of the sovereign individual, right? And, and it's also, in some sense, the derivation source of the idea of rights, the fact that the individual is sovereign, the individual has inalienable rights. Rudolf Steiner also places the individual at the center. He wrote, the human individual is the source of all morality and the center of all life. Through the study of human nature, Steiner came across the free spirit as its purest expression. He called this free spirit an ethical individualist. His philosophy of freedom is a guide to becoming an ethical individualist and gives the principles for building a social and political life based on freedom. The purpose of the philosophy of freedom is to lay the foundation of ethical individualism and of a social and political life. To maintain social harmony, collectives tend to discourage dissenting opinions. The life of the group eventually dries up if there is no place for innovative free thinkers. Brett Weinstein, an evolutionary theorist, points out that collectivist movements lack individuals who are capable of thinking independently. We also have a problem, which is that these collectivist movements, whether they are, you know, uh, white nationalists on the right or uh, social justice warriors on the left, they cannot see forward. And what is missing is that actually the mechanism that allows us to discover new ways 
involves individuals who are capable of thinking independently. Every great idea starts with a minority of one. Rudolf Steiner recognized this fact. The world of ideas is expressed not in a community, but only in individuals. What appears as the common goal of a collective is nothing but the result of the separate intentions of its individual members, usually a few exceptional individuals whom the others follow as their leaders. It is not difficult to identify a few strong people within a group who the members follow. The collective is formed around a set of ideas all the members hold in common. This is knowledge that is already known and accepted. The collective is, is a group of what's already known by definition. We inhabit the collective and that's what's already known, what we can agree on. But the problem with that is that what we can agree on, what's already known, isn't sufficient. We still have problems. So people have to be out at the fringes, on the border between chaos and order, where they discover new things and communicate it back to the collective. Which and is... free speech does that. That's the mechanism. The idea that it is by definition the individual that in innovates and that by definition, therefore, it's the individual that's the savior of the collective. The group is weakened if it becomes a closed echo chamber to reinforce their existing views. We face major problems such as climate change, mass immigration, and income distribution. Many people see collective action as a way to empower the people to bring needed change to the world. But collective action is not sufficient without innovative solutions provided by individuals capable of independent thinking. Rudolf Steiner understood that for the collective to develop and become powerful, it needed to encourage individual responsibility and personal growth. We regard the perfection of the whole as depending on the unique perfection of each single individual. Another barrier to solving major problems is the government deadlock caused by the ideological conflict between the right and the left. Jordan Peterson sees a third way. It is the way of the heroic individual. And it was about whether or not there was any alternative to ideological conflict, because you could make a case that there isn't. There's right and there's left and there's a war, right? But there is a third way, and I think that is the way of the heroic individual, and I mean that technically. And that, that involves the development of individual characters so that you can say what it is that you think, that you can articulate your experience properly, and that you can bring what it is that's unique to you into the collective landscape. And that's what updates the collective landscape. It's absolutely vital. Steiner's ethical individualist is the heroic individual. The original edition of the philosophy of freedom opens with the principles of individuality. The saying, each one of us must choose his hero in whose footsteps he toils up to Mount Olympus, no longer holds true for us. In our age of individualism, we do not choose a hero to follow. The individual finds his own way. But life is difficult and painful. It is easy to become resentful and fall into victimism and take shelter within family and community. Struggles are part of the hero's journey but it is each person's destiny to continue the climb up Mount Olympus. We allow no ideals to be forced upon us. The collective right and the collective left demand ideological purity. The heroic individual does not conform to collective groupthink. He remains independent and selects his own ideals. We are convinced that in each of us, if only we probe deep enough into the very heart of our being, there dwells something noble, something worthy of development. Steiner and Peterson both accept the inner sovereignty of the individual that, if developed, can restore and renew the community through the pursuit of truth, strength of character, and noble acts. See, the problem with being just a group member is that the group it's the problem with conservatism. The group is a fixed entity. It has its rules and its regulations. And if you're a member, that's all you are. But the group can go badly wrong. So the group needs individuals to keep the group alive and revivified. So you have to become an individual so you can revivify the group. And that's the call, to, that's the call in the West to, to heroism, essentially, to noble way of living, is to 
develop yourself past your group identity so that you can reconfigure the game when that becomes necessary. Steiner wrote about overcoming group identity 130 years ago. All members of the tribe exhibit the characteristics that are conditioned by the nature of the tribe. The character and general behavior of the single member are determined by the character of the tribe. However, the human being frees himself from these typical characteristics. An individual develops his own traits and roles for reasons that can only be found in himself. What is typical in him serves only as a medium in which to express his own individuality. Peterson mentions three stages of human development leading to individuality. And I think that there's a very influential line of developmental psychology uh, pioneered by Jean Piaget that laid that out as a developmental what would progression. First you're a child, then you're a member of a group, then you're an individual. It's like get to the individual level. That's the solution. It's a solution to tribalism. But you have to accept responsibility to do that. Steiner also discussed the three stages of human development. The group can only bring a person so far. The final stage of individual development can only be attained by the individual himself. The human being remains in his undeveloped state until he takes hold of his own transformation through his own power. Nature makes a person merely a natural creature. Society makes him obedient to rules and laws. Only he alone can make himself into a free being. At a certain stage of his development, nature releases the human being from her chains. Society carries his development a stage further. He alone can give himself the final polish. Many of Peterson's ideas are in the philosophy of freedom. Rudolf Steiner originated and organized the principles of individuality into the philosophy of freedom 130 years ago. These ideas are repeated today because these basic principles are still valid. How can these ideas of freedom and individualism lead to a peaceful society? The social justice movement is divisive because it categorizes people into groups according to ethnicity, sex, or racial identity. The social justice warrior types and the lefties, even the Democratic Party, started categorizing everybody according to their ethnic or sexual or racial identity and made that the canonical element of their being. And that's an absolutely terrible thing to do. And all of these things that you hear about now, like white privilege, for example, they're, they're, they're variants of collective guilt. I, I, I pick your bloody identity, whatever it happens to be, and then I make you a guilty member of that category, and then you and the rest of the guilty members of that category are judged as a, as a unit. The social justice movement sets one group against another and attacks individual rights. It will never lead to a peaceful society. The only lasting peace will be when each person's freedom is assured. Freedom is the only word which has a ring of immediate truth today. If instead of such slogans as peace founded on justice or peace imposed by force, people would only speak of peace based on freedom, then this word would echo round the world and kindle in the hearts of all a sense of security. Jordan Peterson and Rudolf Steiner agree. Only heroic individuals can save us from the threat of collectivist movements that always have and always will result in the forceful oppression of the individual. We see it now when the members of the social justice movement pressure institutions to suppress the individual right of free speech and demand jobs and positions be awarded according to ethnicity sex, or race rather than individual merit. If you are interested in learning more about Jordan Peterson and the philosophy of freedom, subscribe to this channel.